Uh, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, we really know you, we know you a little bit now because so so we gave you an introduction yesterday. Uh, Sofia Diorgala. She comes from Cyprus, and um, I wanted to say something about you that didn't really come out yesterday, and that is that she actually started and the own, and uh, is the owner of a radio channel that she opened up for women's voices to be heard. And this is an ongoing thing. Because the communication channels are so important. Besides all the other things she did, you heard from Zoe yesterday, this is also really important. And she wanted me to, uh, to talk about this. She's also been uh, female, how can you say, groundbreaker in Cyprus in many different ways, being the first uh, bank manager, <laughs> doing many businesses and all kinds of things. But this is really important for her. So thank you so much. This is your uh, time now to speak, Sophia. I'll give you the, the microphone. Change 
is a complex phenomenon with many aspects. It affects a beyond environmental uh, disruption, deeply impacts social structures. One of the most obvious among them <coughs> is the worsening of gender inequalities. Since more women, of, uh, more women often face more social, economic, and political barriers globally, they are more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And for this very reason, they can and must contribute, contribute to addressing this problem that concerns them directly and in a very special way. And surely, the creation of women's network, of course, through the WWF, WWF, locally and uh, internationally, using the net network, of course, of WWF, 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 can be a great power at the service of peace. By building such network, women can raise their voices for the good of their respective societies and the planet. In order to enable the, uh, the search uh, for practical solutions, we must first understand the ways in which climate change affects women. Thus, I will first focus on some of the main aspects of climate change on increasing gender inequalities. Here are a few reasons why climate change uh, amplifies existing inequalities. First, increased work load. Climate change often make, uh, often leads to lack of resources, which increases the workload for women, especially in many societies where women are responsible for gathering water and food. Second, educational opportunities. All the above puts pressure on women's time for education and paid work or community involvement. In some societies, families are pulling their kids out of school, either to help gathering resources or because of financial constraints. Health risk, the physical stress uh, of dealing with a changing climate can be particularly harmful <coughs> for women especially those who are pregnant and nursing. Furthermore, when extreme climate events force families to migrate or become displayed, women are often at higher risk of sexual violence, exploitation, and human trafficking. <coughs> An equal representation in the decision making. Women are frequently underrepresented at all levels of climate decision making from the household to the national and international levels. Their unique needs and potential contributions to climate solutions are frequently ignored. <coughs> access to information. In many contexts, women have less access to information than men, and that can limit their ability to prepare for, respond to, and recover from climate-related related events. As we understand from what was said about, gender is an important factor in understanding the vulnerabilities to climate change for women and the designing of effective strategies to combat climate change. Therefore, women can play a vital role in addressing climate change. I believe that this conference, which provides a platform for the exchange of views and perspectives, already points a way in this direction. Therefore, allow me to share my thoughts and how women can make a positive contribution in addressing climate change. One, Community mobilization. As women form the backbone of community and family structures, they can use this influence to drive change, uh, changes at a grassroots level. And this is 
very, very important in the national plan, implementing sustainable practices and creating awareness about environmental production. Two, networking and collaboration. Women can join and create network, both locally and globally, that focus on women's involvement in climate action. Cooperation with other women can amplify their impact and provide support for their initiatives. In order to be practical on this issue of women's networking, I would like to put before you the following proposal. <coughs> the proposal uh, actually, when we, uh, we met the President of the Republic and asked for uh, participation of women in the negotiations of uh, solving our Cyprus problem. It was his request also to create a network in the Middle East or uh, all over the world. Uh, within the framework of this conference, women who wish to participate in a women's network should be given the opportunity to register in a list. We have the list here. Everybody who has to alert his uh, organization, his name, or his country, he, uh, you may register. Should be, given, should be given the opportunity to register in a list in order to lay the foundation for a network of cooperation on environmental issues globally. I believe that this conference will provide a platform of the change of our desire. Three, promote, promoting sustainable lifestyles. <laughs> Women can advocate for sustainable lifestyle choices in their homes and communities. This includes lowering energy consumption, reducing waste, recycling, and promoting environmental friendly products. Awareness. Women can advocate for gender responsive climate policies and raise awareness about the gender impacts of climate change. This can include taking part in climate campaigns, speaking at public events, and using social media to amplify their voices. Five, education and leadership. Women can encourage and mentor young women to pursue education and careers in educational fields related to climate change. By fostering leadership skills in young women, they can contribute to future climate solutions. And six, uh, 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 food security, 
A, providing gentle responsive funding. Women can advocate for increased funding and support for female-led climate initiatives and projects uh, that promote gender equality and women's empowerment. Women's health. Women can raise awareness about the connection between women's health and climate change, advocating for healthcare policies and consider gender-specific uh, health <coughs> impacts related to climate. Ten, at the last. Participation. <laughs> participation is a decision making. Women can actively participate in local and national decision making processes related to the, uh, climate change. In the last page, of course, there is much more that women can do. Nevertheless, I believe farming, uh, nevertheless, I believe that it, it should all start with realizing and recognizing the close link between climate change and gender inequality. If we want to be effective in combating climate change, we must not ignore the following aspects of the problem. One, efforts to empower women. Two, fight inequality. Three, ensure the participation in decision making. And four, promote gender responsive approaches to climate adaptation and mitigation for the benefit of our societies and the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sophia. And you have very practical yes. points, and I feel it's important to share them. Would it be okay if we actually distribute your PowerPoint yes. for everybody? Great. Thank you so much. So, Absolutely. Relating it to women's issues. Because we, I have thought about all these things actually. So thank you so much because you're a practical, energetic woman. We can learn a lot from you. Thank you.